Um, so welcome to Snapshot Phase. Uh, this is something that I took from Aziz Brown, uh, Remote Viewing 101, in my playlist. Um, he shows his version of his uh, sessions, and when I saw this snapshot, I loved it. Um, the only reason I really loved it was because it was intentional. It was sending your intention, intent, and awareness in a direction that was controllable. Um, the reason I say this is because in the TDSRV uh, process, I think D section is draw, and it's not an intentional draw. It's a free-flowing, unintentional exercise. Um, free flow draw or drawing by feel is bloody hard. So when I first started that methodology, I really didn't like the fact that everything felt intentional up until that point where you had to draw by feel. So when I my understanding of draw by feel was the fact that you had to just let your hand go and there was no intention. You just let it do what it wants to do. Now that felt the absolute opposite of the whole flow of the of the of the session. Why everything intentional up until this point had a purpose and you sent it there, you sent your awareness, you sent your intent, your awareness to pick up the feedback. Now you're in a D for draw by feel where you just let things happen. Willy nilly. I, I felt it really un I felt really uncomfortable doing that. So I went looking for another visual technique for my process. And I found Aziz's snapshot or blackboarding. So I'll put a link in the description uh, to Aziz's uh, blackboarding. And you can hear it from him how he describes it. But basically, it's a case of closing your eyes. Um, wait a few minutes. Draw attention and intention to your visual space and just see what forms to see what forms um, and that has been working really well for me now only recently have I appreciated the understanding of draw by feel now the snapshot um, the snapshot process draw by feel is really hard so I, I got rid of that and uh, brought in the snapshot process what that brought to my sessions was a way to visually bring something to to the target um, yeah I love words it's all great and all describing shit but you really want something to see it's like your most basic validator of anything um, if you see it, it's it. Um, so for early days, that's really important as well, is to get some validation that um, that you're doing the right thing or you're on the right path. Um, so as far as uh, Aziz's blackboarding, I love it. It does well for me. It's not 100% all the time, uh, but you know, not all of it is. Uh, so I've taken that blackboarding uh, that snapshot technique and added it to my own um, I do have a draw by feel but it's in the matrix uh, and it's more in my matrix I bring all the gestalts or the ideograms together and um, I then put them all on one page relative to each other um, and draw by feel comes in when I have to place the ideogram next to another one. So uh, one might be land, one might be a person inside a house. But if I try and draw the land and then I put the house underneath the thing, you can feel that it's wrong. Uh, it feels wrong. The instinct feels wrong to do that. You know, you can feel it in your bones. You can feel it. You can just feel it. And it's something that needs to be trained. Um, if you put things right, you don't feel anything. It's like it's meant to go there. It doesn't give you a reason not to put something there. So as far as that draw by feel, it's more about placement of the ideograms, which is supposed to represent the, the positional uh, placements of the targets and its objects around it. 
So, yeah, the <laughs> snapshot's good. It's it's one of my favorite ones, uh, favorite um, phases in this one, because they're usually quite accurate. Um, the way they show up is when I close my eyes, and you can sort of see the um, the last image you were looking at, which it might be this window or something like that. You can see it fade out, and when you start, then I start probing. Once I see the image fade out, then I probe, then see what takes its place. Shapes, uh, squiggles, discolorations, all of it, it all counts. And you try and take a snapshot. So when I'm, when I'm going through the process, I sort of go, okay, in about 10 seconds, I want a picture, that's my intent, I want a picture that I can draw. And so as I'm sort of going through my 10 seconds, I slowly look up and I wait and I expect this picture to turn up. So, And usually something turns up anyway and whatever it is, whatever it is, you draw it. So as you're slowly looking up and you're closing in on the 10 seconds, you sort of go, boom. You decide that's the image I want and you draw it. So on all the pictures that I've drawn in my sessions, that's exactly how it's done. You sort of set that expectation that you want a picture set at the end of that 10 seconds and whatever's there, you're gonna draw. And at the end of that 10 seconds, something's usually there that you that you draw, uh, that you can draw. Um, if it's part of the image, you don't know, you don't care, you don't question it, you just draw it. And now that's, that's part of the thing, you just draw it. It will make sense later. So if you if you want things to make sense now, don't do RV. Um, don't don't make those judgments earlier on. You're not supposed to analyze anything at the start. Do that at the end, maybe an hour later after you've finished your session. Once you've desensitized yourself from the target, things are a lot better when you do that because um, a lot of Things get blocked when you're trying to analyze stuff straight after a target. And you're still in that mode of being the target and you're trying to describe stuff and it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. Um, but wait an hour, wait a two hours, have a look at the stuff, then look at the target. Then you can start making associations and they just happen sort of like that. Oh yeah, that's this, that's this, that's this. But you do it straight after, they're like, uh, is that, that, you know, you're sort of questioning yourself because you're not in the right state of mind yet. So. Do that.